good day, fellow Kerbonauts. It is I, the faithful and ever so arduously tasked Jebediah Kerman for the job. Here we are overlooking my voluptuously built space center, and today I will be showing you how to build a space station that has the Jebediah, Jebediah seal of approval. Indeed, my grammar exceeds myself. <laughs> All right, everybody. So welcome back to another Kerbal Space Program tutorial. And if the thumbnail enticed you, well, that was the point because today I'll be showing you how to build a space station. So we're going to be starting from scratch and we'll be getting this guy into orbit using, you know, these main sails and everything else. But first we have to build this thing. So let's just start right from scratch and get right to it. So whenever I like to build a space station, I usually start with this cupola module just because it has like a good, um, it has a lot of view to it. It's got many windows and that's kind of what you want to have when you have a space center now of course it's not mandatory I mean you don't even have to build your space station this way you can even make like a different spin-off of what I built but hey that's the point Kerbal Space Program is supposed to be fun so once I have my cupula module right here under um, pods I always use after that a storage container because you know it acts kind of like you know if you want to get all technical about it, it could store all the food and you know supplies the Kerbins need in order to survive the Kerbals you know need food warmth and morale so yeah it's all stored with in the storage unit so after this storage unit what I tend to do is this um depends how well you are with docking because um if you build a space station I I assume you want to dock with it at some point so I yeah that's that's my assumption <laughs> so um if you if you're good with docking you just go right ahead and put this docking port on right here but you know for those of you who aren't very seasoned with docking not an issue um, I usually have to put on this rocket max brand adapter you know it just makes things a bit easier and it's not so stressful when you you have to dock so um, if you do not you know you're not go with docking feel free to put in an extra part there you can even put in a structural strut you know let's just say you know worst case scenario or you know we could just put in a structural fuselage because those things always like those scent um, they help pretty well I mean putting a nice little fuselage in there it seems to alleviate a lot of the stress of docking so right here or you know better yet it, uh, hmm, let's see here I'm I really enjoy using this one little piece right here I'm trying to find it it's one of these uh, little connectors ah yes right here the module girder adapter this thing yes <laughs> I'm sorry for being all um, tongue-tied it seems this uh, little adapter here seems to go well with the color of these modules here and you know it's a nice little bonding unit and if you want to be all symmetrical you can just uh, make a copy of this all you have to do is just press W twice to get it to flip upside down you have these two girders and you have a nice little docking section underneath so after you have this section right here this is pretty much the core of our space station we've got the place where we dock and we can have our kerbals going in and out of here now we're going to need a place to have our power that's generated now, if you have a lot of batteries in a single solar panel, that can last you pretty long. But I'm um, seeing as though we want this space station to be fully operational and have no issues. We're going to put on some of these um, these steel connectors right here, these I beams that will house or they'll more or less support our um, when you, these our solar array down here. I'll probably use some gigantors. You know, those things always look cool. So we'll just have a nice little long connector, or you know. We can always use a shorter connector. It's not a big deal. It just depends how long you want your um, your space station to be. I mean, some people like a short space station. I, on the other hand, like a nice big uh, space station. It shows off. He's just like, yeah, we did that. That's fantastic. So this is one of the hardest parts here is getting these... Um, these I beams in place. If it's on the side like this, just press D on the keyboard to get it to go like this, or A to get it to go back up. This is just basically as simply as I can say it. Now, keep in mind that there are two directions these beams can go. You can either have a slant, or you can have, you have a straight beam like this, or you can have a little slanted beam in between. It doesn't really matter, but if you are OCD and you like having your beams go the same direction, well, you know, you might want to try and have them go the right way. So, yeah, let's just try and get this guy in the right way. I'm having some difficulty. There we go. Fantastic. Now, <laughs> it, that's one of the, the woes of Kerbal Space Program is trying to get everything in place correctly. All right, come on now. You get on that node, mister. Oh, you, you little joker. I know you're always the tough one. The last one on there, it's always the toughest. Ah, there we go. Oh, no. Oh, fantastic. All right, so after this, I don't really like doing an intricate, you know, um, mesh girder uh, situation. I just usually just like to put on my Gigantors right there, no questions asked. So you can just put these guys on at the very end, and at the end, we'll put these on some action groups so they can all toggle at once because everyone likes, um, you know, a nice little synonymous solar array because that is always so cool. And let's just say, you know, you want to communicate with Kerb and, you know, you put a nice little um, antenna right down right there, and it seems as though it has disappeared. I cannot explain. 
explain it actually. You know, if you just want to put some science on here, feel free to do so. You know, you put on some barometers, get all sciencey with it. And actually, speaking of science, in the point two two update that's going to be coming out pretty soon. There's a new science module that's going to be so cool, and it'll really help with a career mode because that's the main deal with it. Um, it helps, or you'll be able to get science from space be able to like collect samples and stuff and it'll help you unlock new modules so that'll be cool for career mode now this is essentially our rocket or not our rocket <laughs> this is our space station in a nutshell really so basically we have our solar array down here now we are going to add some more little um, apparatuses to help things go smoother but you know this is really a docking module it's I'm um, I'm pretty sure if you want to dock, you'll have to have your Kerbal's EVA to get into these modules here. I'm pretty sure this can stow four Kerbal's a storage unit, and this Cupula can only store one, if I'm not mistaken. Here, let me take a look real quick. Uh, yeah, minimum crew to operate is one, so I'm assuming you can store more than one Kerbal. I don't usually use the Cupula module, so, you know, my guess may not be too good. Now, since we have solar arrays, we are going to want some battery packs. Oh, yes, plenty of these battery packs. That's always a great idea. So, we'll probably just stow two of these guys right around here or you know we can put them on the main module it doesn't really matter it just depends how cluttered you want or you dislike your module being so like if you just want to put uh three or so battery packs here feel free to do so like so just put these guys on here like so and you've got three battery packs and these things have a mammoth charge so you'll have, never have to worry about those going out with all these gigantors now for some lights because docking without lights on the dark side of the moon or not the moon just dark side of curb and whatever planet you may be orbiting is a struggle let me tell you that it is the struggle indeed now actually no i think i am just going to put the these battery packs down here on uh, this little girder right here this eye beam it'll just make things easier and less cluttered so let's just go grab ourselves another battery oh yes look at that that is quite a lot of charge right there look at all the wattage it is piling up all right so let's just see let's find ourselves these illuminator mark twos and we will station some of these now i'm just going to do these custom right here um so we'll be able to see our docking undergo so yeah it'll be a nice little process and let's we'll put one over the windows here now this is if you have symmetry on this will not be able to happen you also have to do it manually so yeah just a little fyi right there all right and we'll just put some more down here so you can see your docking undergoing itself all right there we go and if you are fancy you know putting on some more lights you know you just like having a nice lit up spaceship well don't no no fear you, you can do that all right here we go so let's just put these guys up here and i no, you can kind of nozzle them in here i'm not even sure if that would really work but you know if you want things to work really precisely you could get them on here just by you know toggling back and forth with w a s and d yep you can just do something like this i'm let me just put four lights right here yep that should really help illuminate the place if we can get everything to get on there all nicely without crumbling all right yeah that should do the job now we're just going to put on some rcs ports just to help with maneuvering when we are getting into orbit initially all right so let's just put some of these guys on right here we'll put on plenty you know just because so it can be really maneuverable everyone likes a maneuverable spacecraft am i right so where am i right all righty and we'll just put four more of these guys if it'll work uh does not seem as though that'll work so i guess we'll just put two or so of them right here if we can er, maybe yeah they seem to fit in there all right uh, not really here Let, let's try that <laughs> all right and now we will need some rcs all right so let's just stow a couple of these bad boys right on here where we have some extra space so where are they at oh yes under propulsion under my mammoth of mods yes all right so let's just put some of these tanks on here oh yes all the voluptuous rcs we're going to need plenty of it well not really but you know it helps all right so this is basically the core and well this is not really even the core this is pretty much our entire space station right here so we have our cupola we have our all of our modules here we have a docker we have a storage tank we have our solar array that helps generate us power right here we have our lights and you know if you want to stow on some more like a communitron or something just so you can keep um, up your contact with kerbal command well feel free to do so you just stick some of these guys on right here and if you just want to have that straight communitron off the side well hey you can do that no issue just like put let's just put two of them on the sides fantastic so yeah this is our space station in a nutshell right here now i'll meet you guys on the the launch pad because you know the standard launching procedure is going to be the same with me just gonna be asparagus staging with the main sails and some big old rockamax tanks but um that's really all for the first part of this video guys and i'll see you all on the launch pad
All right, folks, so we have chosen the Jebediah Kerman, the one and the only hero of the Kerbals for this job to manage our space station. All right, so we have all of our staging correct. I even set up some action groups, so I'll show you guys those once we're in a sufficient orbit, but we are ready to launch. So in three, two, one, liftoff. Oh yeah, look at this. Now, since this is a very a very typical launch procedure, we'll be getting ourselves to about 100,000 uh, meter orbit. We'll be doing about, um, I reckon about a 2,000 meter per second, you know, orbit around the planet Kerbin. So this is all but stereotypical. So I may just skip this part and see you guys when I'm making the final adjustment adjustments. So yeah, basically, I uh, just want to talk a little bit about the spacecraft here. Um, this, uh, you want to make sure to use a lot of struts when you're making yourself a space station. As, unless you want to craft it in space and if you're not good at docking I wouldn't recommend doing that um, you're going to want to use a lot of struts you can see I'm just basically battening down the hatches and doing some asparagus staging oh yeah look at that and yeah I'm doing the typical fuel line asparagus staging you know all the same right there so yeah looking fantastic with all of our main sails now I I do believe I made a couple modifications. Let me just take a look. Yeah, I moved around the battery just a little bit and the RCS and some of the lights. But yeah, nothing out of the ordinary that we're not used to. So typically at 10,000 meters, you know, according to Scott Manley, we make our burn right here. Or not really a burn, our um, gravity turn just so we can get the most of our engines. Now, speaking of getting the most of our engines, one thing you do not want to do is go over 200 meters per second while you're under 10,000 meters. Uh, but, you know, since we're above that right now, it is not a big deal not at all all right so we have our apoapsis at about 101 in meters you know it's not a big deal I usually like having a space station around 100,000 because you know the purpose of a space station is to kind of be like a rendezvous or you know like a meetup location where Kerbals can you know get some motivation watch a TV program or two share a story and then they head off their separate ways so yeah 107,000 by about 99,000 that's that's decent you know since we're not aiming for total perfection here it's okay if we're not you know um, as precise as we normally would be say if we were doing like a burn that was going to get us a periapsis of 20,000 meters on Duna or something like that. So since we're just orbiting the planet Kerbin, it is not a massive deal if we're off by about 10,000 or so meters. So let's just get to our maneuver node and then we will time accelerate. Now um, I probably will cut out the whole launch sequence because you know it's really stereotypical. I know I do all that stuff all the time. So yeah, we actually did have a bit of an issue when we were launching off. We lost two of our fins when we were doing some asparagus staging. I broke the the number one rule of asparagus staging which was decoupling while moving at a high speed and doing a bit of maneuvering and we lost some tail fins thankfully it wasn't anything else like a solar array or what what have you but um yeah we lost some tail fins but since we'll be ditching that uh lifting stage in about uh one minute and 45 seconds and counting it's not really a massive deal and unfortunately we'll have a lot of fuel that will be tossing back down to Kerbin. so you know if somebody wants to put that in their gas station you know say it's jebediah's fuel he autographed it well you know what that's going to be a bit of a sales pitch that they'll have to uphold all right so about 20 seconds away from our burn 10 seconds fairly decent and let's just start doing our little burn right here all right probably turn off rcs we don't really need that right now since we are actually thrusting up and we're just going to stick right with our maneuver node now if i was to do full blast right now not only would the main cell overheat but we'd miss our maneuver node by quite a bit so you know pro tip don't fire your thrusters while you're doing a rather small burn or else you're going to overcompensate and you'll have to like do some burns at apoapsis or periapsis again so you know in the end it's just more work for you so you know just take it easy unless you're doing like a big burn like 2000 meters per second with a poodle or something where you know you're going to be full throttle for some time all right so let's just start throttling back right here as we conveniently flip around and you know just cut it back even more and we'll try and get as close to zero as possible just keep with our maneuver node as it does stride away and oh yes look at that point two that is quite the burn right there look at that all right now it actually looks like one of my satellites deorbited huh what do you know all right so let's see what we got here 93 by 112 that's a bit lower than I would like you know if I was to do this like on my real series well we would have to adjust that and we have our clampatron junior that will help us decouple right here so on the count of three one two three and we decouple look at that 
Now I'm going to turn on the lights for this so we can see everything. Now I am actually going to hit right here. So let me just do um, switch to docking mode and RCS out of here so we don't hurt ourselves or our solar arrays. All right, so in case you don't know docking mode right here, if you click on docking mode, you, you do your WASD, it makes your RCS react as such. So it helps with docking. Now, um, you know, it really also helps you decouple in a sticky situation like we were just in. So we can go back to staging mode and look at us, we are ready. So I'm just going to time accelerate over to the light side of Kerbin so you know we can see everything and we'll extend these solar arrays all in one fellow swoop and it'll look fantastic, believe me. Actually, you know what? I wonder if my action group's, you know, I'll just wait. All right, let's just wait till we get around to the light side. Oh yes, and here we are. Okay, here we go. If, if I forgot to set these up, let's see. Oh wow, look at that. F1 and those solar arrays are going, look at that. And we have everything set up. We've got our RCS ports. We've got plenty of battery power. Look at those getting charged up like it's nobody's business. We can even extend these communitrons, you know, to relay back the fantastic sights. You know, speaking of sights, let's flip this guy around right here. Get a good view of the sun and the planet Kerbin. Oh, man, this is going to be quite the postcard photo right here. All right, let's try and slow it down. Oh, my, our space station is out of control. All right, you know what? No, this, I want to see the pandemonium firsthand. Oh wow, this is this is truly fantastic. And look, Bill's left us a note. Or is that Bob? Not sure. Either way, he ate all the snacks, so that's that's something we're going to work through. But nevertheless, that is how to build a space station and get into a relatively low orbit. Yeah, 101, very simply. So yes, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you know like leave me a comment saying that you liked it, because you know it's always nice to see those. And if you're interested in seeing any more Kerbal Space Program tutorials, if you want to request one specifically, that's what the comment section is for. But that's really all for this video, everybody. This is Jebediah Kerman signing out, and I'll see you all very soon. Dude.